Has anyone ever apologized to you, but you were not quite buying it? Does it say something about you for not just getting over it? Or does it say something about them? Welcome to Asmuth Podcast. I'm Kimberly McNabb. And I'm Barrett McNabb. There's been a flood recently of apologies in the public sphere, uh, from celebrities to university presidents. When someone apologizes, should we just accept it? Are they for real, or should they even apologize in the first place? Uh, For example, our daughter will do all kinds of things. She'll run up and push her brother and say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. As soon as she gets caught. As soon as she gets caught. uh, Our son, wise beyond his years, uh, will usually respond with, sometimes saying sorry isn't enough. Uh, But still, she does apologize for a lot of things. But again, (laughs) does she mean it? Well, in the public sphere, we have celebrities like Susan Sarandon. She attended a pro-Palestinian rally in New York City in which she says this. There are a lot of people that are afraid, afraid of being Jewish at this time and are getting a taste of what it feels like to be a Muslim in this country, so often uh, subjected to violence. Wow. Yeah. Jews getting a taste of what it's like to be Muslim in this country. I'm sorry, I don't recall concentration camps and deaths of millions of Palestinians. Or how many Jews are allowed to live in Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, yet there are two million Muslims living in Israel. Yeah, so she apologized um, via her Instagram, and we'll go ahead and, and publish this, uh, this apology. It's kind of long, but uh, Kimberly, can you give us some cliff notes? Uh, Yeah, so the cliff notes um, for our listening audience is, I said that Jewish Americans as the targets of raising anti-Semitic hate are getting a taste of what it's like to be Muslim in this country, so often subjected to violence. This phrasing was a terrible mistake, as it implies until recently Jews have been strangers to persecution, when the opposite is true. Yeah. um, Are you buying it? No, I'm not buying it at all. I think she is only apologizing because her agency dropped her. Right. Now, do you even think she wrote it? Or did some PR firm uh, write that for her? Very well could be. I mean, it happens all the time. Like Neo uh, said something, and the very next day, uh, an apology was put out on social media and then then right after that he's like nope that wasn't me so it was it was a you know PR thing yeah I bet I bet it was a PR firm yeah and you know she's 77 years old why doesn't she just go off into retirement already I I know I mean you know when when you have all of these uh these actors and actresses doing uh political um you know rallies and things like that, you really should probably be a little educated uh, more so than the common person because you are such a high profile uh, figure. Well, Juliana Margalis from ER and The Good Wife recently issued an apology for remarks that she made on the Backroom podcast. Let's listen. Hitler got his entire playbook from the Jim Crow South. Mm-hmm. The Nazis were watching how the Jim Crow South were treating slaves and said, oh, great call. Let's do that playbook. That's what we'll do to the Jews. Which is also why in the civil rights movement, the Jews were the ones that walked side by side with with the blacks to fight for their rights Mm -hmm. because they know And now the black community isn't embracing us and saying we stand with you the way you stood with us. Jews died for their cause. Where's the history lesson in that? Who's who's teaching these kids? Because the fact that the entire black community isn't standing with us, to me, says either they just don't know or they've been brainwashed to hate Mm -hmm. Jews. Wow. Yes. So uh, she received online backlash for the exact quote, either they don't know or are brainwashed. Now, I listened to more of this podcast. She later moves on uh, to blaming the brainwashing on the professors, not the black people or the LGBTQ community. 
So she pointed out that black people and gays, later in the podcast, mm -hmm. would have been per persecuted in Gaza. And, you know, and I believe this. When we were in Morocco, we would see people from sub-Saharan Africa, Africa yeah. uh, beg for money. And the looks on their the local Moroccan faces towards these black people was just of disgust. I don't think I've seen on a human face. Yeah, they, they were, you know, they're obviously sub-Saharan Africans that are uh, transiting uh, northern Africa in order to get into Europe. Um, but so they do have to, to stop in, in certain places like Morocco or Algeria mm -hmm. or Libya in order to, to continue on um, and either go across the Strait of Gibraltar on a boat or, or get on a, a, a small, unfit non-seaworthy boat uh, across the med but uh, but yeah no I, I couldn't agree more the 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 look of disgust was was absolutely Palable. yeah absolutely uh, so verdict on this apology I, I really don't think she had anything to apologize no for. I I agree she has nothing to apologize for she did not say anything that was not true this is just someone holding on to one little word and just carrying it down the field. And yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. The, the, the fact that, that people can cherry pick um, and, you know, listen, re-listen. Out of an hour and a half long podcast. And, and grab onto a sentence and just cherry pick one thing. I mean, you have to understand the context of what she's upset about. She's Jewish. And what she's mm -hmm. upset about is the October uh, you know, massacre yep. um, that, that happened. And so um, she is, is just saying, you know, why do we have all of these protests going on in our academic universities and in our major cities? Do they know what they're protesting? Do they know what they're protesting? And, and how come they're, they're not, uh, you know, there was not reciprocity uh, right. with Jews standing up for um, black Americans in the civil rights era um, to, to now? Yep. Uh, it just seems like that got forgotten. And that's all she was saying. Um, you know, so she did apologize. But again, I, I, I don't know. Unnecessary. I don't know if that was a PR firm that said, hey, look, you're probably going to lose work unless you do this. And and so, you know, she apologized. But, you know, it, it's unfortunate because mm -hmm. I don't th I think she yeah. was she was she was right. But in Congress, university presidents of Harvard, UPenn and MIT were questioned if the calling for genocide against Jews violates the university's code of conduct. Uh, let's watch this clip from the congressional hearing. So the answer is yes, that calling for the genocide of Jews violates Harvard code of conduct, correct? Again, it depends on the context. It does not depend on the context. The answer is yes, and this is why you should resign. Specifically calling for the genocide of Jews does that constitute bullying or harassment? If it is directed and severe or pervasive, it is harassment. So the answer is yes. Okay. It is a context-dependent uh, decision, so Congresswoman. The, the longer version of, of this is five hours. Right. And I would not be happy to sit there and, uh, you know, have a smirk on my face if I were called to Congress to begin with. Especially on such a su serious subject matter, it they just look so smug. Like I am the president of a prestigious university, right? <laughs> like I could do no wrong. That's the look on their face. Uh, you know, a lot of this was, um, you know, from the context that I've read and uh, and seen on on other podcasts, that they were over lawyered. Um, that they obviously had a team of lawyers and and had prep, but they they lost their humanity they didn't they didn't see the human side of it and mm -hmm. so that's that's kind of their their problem they were ready to go to trial versus ready to do the right thing and to mm -hmm. to just easily say uh yeah um calling for the genocide of insert whatever you want yes in I this mean, case flip, it was Jews. flip the script if it were any yeah. other group of calling for the genocide of of hindus calling for the genocide of jews calling for the genocide of muslims all of those things are wrong mm -hmm. they're all yep. they're all wrong Yeah, and just get the smirks off your face please the smugness please get rid of it absolutely so uh you know it, it made the rounds any anything interesting as far as uh comedy goes uh well it's just you know, I was disgusted when I first heard of this, but SNL did a skit after the congressional hearing. Let's watch. Mr. Stefanik, 
Thank you, chairwoman. Now, I'm gonna start screaming questions at these women like I'm Billy Eichner. <laughs> Anti-Semitism, yay or nay? I'm sorry, what? Yes or no is calling for the genocide of Jews against the Code of Conduct for Harvard. Well, it depends on the context. <gasps> what? Hmm. Uh, first of all, if you want to make something funny, don't do that high-pitched, whiny voice. Right. Especially uh, if it's was, an inaccurate. It was horrible. I mean, we just heard what uh, Elise McGill, um, sorry, Elise um, Stefanik's uh, voice actually sounds like. It sounds like a normal voice. And uh, she was not hysterical, not in parts that we've seen. And I've scanned the, the five-hour uh, congressional hearing. And then I think they really underplayed the smugness um, looks on uh, President Gay and President McGill's faces. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it just seemed as though I, I think you touched on this, that, that they seemed happy to be there uh, in the congressional testimony just, just because I'm smarter than you are and I'm ready to prove it. Yeah, in the SNL clip, um, it, the person playing McGill was like, I want to get out of here. Oh, it's over. Oh, no, it's not over. And in the congressional hearing, she looked perfectly content to be, more than content to be there. Right. So McGill, uh, President McGill did release um, a video after the hearing. Let's watch. Yesterday's congressional hearing on anti-Semitism, when I was asked if a call for the genocide of Jewish people on our campus would violate our policies. In that moment, I was focused on our university's longstanding policies aligned with the US Constitution, which say that speech alone is not punishable. I was not focused on, but I should have been. The irrefutable fact that a call for genocide of Jewish people is a call for some of the most terrible violence human beings can perpetrate. It's evil, plain and simple. I want to be clear. A call for genocide of Jewish people is threatening, deeply so. It is intentionally meant to terrify a people who have been subjected to pogroms and hatred for centuries and were the victims of mass genocide. Well, so what do you think? Was that an apology? Well, not once in that video did she say, I apologize, or I'm sorry, uh, anything like that. So for me, I don't think it's an apology. Yeah, so I, I'm going to disagree with you. I think it was an apology. It, it, uh, it, it talked about um, you know, her correcting her statement that it is not acceptable uh, to call for the genocide of Jews. Doesn't matter, actually, call for the genocide of anybody. But she seemed to correct the record on that. Now, the problem I have is it did not come until uh, UPenn lost $100 million in funding. Mm -hmm. uh, did not come until there was massive backlash. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, it, you know, it seemed, she's reading from a teleprompter. Yep. Uh, you know, at least she's, she's not smug in that video. She's not. She's not smug. She's she's humble and she's saying, "Look, it is wrong. Uh, Jews have been persecuted, and it's wrong to continue to perpetuate that." But um, she I did think have it, five hours to say that. <laughs> yeah, and, and that that's that's the point that I'm trying to make is I think it is an apology, but I think it came too late, um, and so that's kind of where I where I see it. Well, if you want to argue it's a genuine apology, I say no. I mean. Someone probably told her to do it, and she's not getting fired. She's just going to be a law professor instead of pre president. So she's still yeah. getting a living. She she resigned. So leave a leave a comment uh, mm -hmm. below yeah. uh, if you think it was a legitimate apology, or do you think it was one of those gun to your head so you can try and save what's left? Uh, you know, statements. Yeah. Um, you know. So, but leave exactly. a comment and tell us. Exactly. Well, uh, President Gay is. Uh, facing a similar backlash, but, um, you know, sh there was a letter with over 600 Harvard professors in, in support. And so, you know, even if you fired a president, it's not going to fix the problems. That, that just shows you it's a deeper 
deeper issue. I think everyone needs to be re-educated. Yeah, I mean, when when you're looking at um, President Gay's um, uh, testimony, again, it was just again and again, is calling for the genocide of a group of people. In this instance, it was the the Jews, but but insert anybody again. But uh, is the calling for the genocide of Jews uh, acceptable speech uh, at at Harvard University? And again and again, she kept saying it depends on the context. And and so what what context is it? it, it, it what context it, would it take? Yeah, if uh, it was at a fraternity but, house over a beer, is it okay to say it? If it was a public speech on the steps of a dormitory, is it okay to say it? Is it okay <laughs> to say it in a classroom? Which context right. would it be okay? Uh, whether it be a private discussion calling for the genocide of a, of a race of people or, or a public uh, calling for the genocide of a race of people context, and, and I don't understand. It's not just one person who thinks this way. These Har- other Harvard professors uh, signed this letter supporting uh, President Gay in the name of maintaining academic freedom. Well, you know what I say? I say we're free to not send our kids there. We're free to not donate there don't support these places until they get a moral compass. Yeah, and, you know, obviously there's that call of um, of employers are free to hire somewhere else as well. I mean, we have yep. law firms and, and uh, other businesses saying, look, we want to know who all of these people are that are being anti-Semitic so that we don't have them in our workforce. Yeah, and people are like, oh, well, that's cancel culture. I'm like, no, because any employer has the right to hire whoever they think – will fit their not just their needs but also who f- will work well with the other Within their employees culture. their their yeah. work culture yeah absolutely so i i say you know what you don't want to support this don't donate don't send your kids to school there and don't employ people from there absolutely okay well thanks for listening and uh this concludes this segment please stay tuned after these messages hi everyone thank you for listening if you enjoy our show with all the stories we share We would love your support. And it's as easy as clicking that subscribe or follow button. This will ensure you never miss an episode and keeps us bringing you these important stories. Your support makes a huge difference. Thank you so much for being part of our podcast family. Thanks, and keep tuning in.